I'm Jacob Walker, and this is my story. At age two, I was diagnosed with a rare congenital heart condition known as a coarctation of the aorta. I underwent open heart surgery in May of 1988 to repair it. And following that, I had a pretty normal childhood. I grew up, had friends, played sport, non-contact due to the risk of injury, but sport nonetheless. I went through high school, I started swimming. One night I was swimming um, back to back butterfly races and exerting quite a lot. And at that stage my health was completely normal and nothing had really um, gone off as far as alarm bells were concerned. So I was just competing as normal and uh, I got out of the pool and felt a, a severe burning in my legs and a, na a nauseous feeling as well. Um, after that I went home and later that night started developing some, some heart palpitations. So um, obviously took note of those and, and thought I'd just see what happens after that. And through the following couple of days, more heart palpitations developed and my mum decided to take me over to the hospital just to get it checked out. From 2003 up until now, which is essentially February of 2014, it's been a really smooth run. In, um, in 2012, I completed a half marathon, the Melbourne Half Marathon, which was obviously for myself having the conditions that I'd had and not really being able to, to, to do anything too strenuous was quite an achievement for me and I feel like that was something that was really beyond even a goal for most of my life and then to, to be able to work up to that and to achieve it was, um, was something pretty special and something that I really kind of treasure as far as a personal accomplishment goes. Towards the end of 2013, I started noticing having some, some confusion problems, some problems putting sentences together, basic cognitive function, and just problems concentrating with some migraines and things of that nature. I decided to go in and just speak to a doctor about it. We had a long chat about things, uh, he mentioned, that it might be anxiety, that it, there might be a few issues there. Decided to get an MRI scan on my brain as I'd never had one before. They originally said it was gonna be about 10 to 15 minutes. And then I, I thought that I'd probably be in there for 15 to 20 minutes, give or take. But when half an hour had elapsed, I started wondering exactly what the issue might be. I went home and was hoping that everything was okay and everything was normal, expecting the results to come through to my doctor in two or three days time. Yet I received a call from the doctors only a few hours afterwards saying they wanted to come in and see me. He told me that essentially the results had come back from the MRI and they'd called him and wanted to discuss some results. And I've got the results just here. And essentially what they say here is that, I would appreciate your opinion and management of what appears to be a new diagnosis of a low grade glioma. And what that means is essentially a glioma from what I understand is a growth in tissue within, within the brain and low grade tends to be of benign nature, not malignant. So as far as I was aware and of what I was told that it would just be a, a, a case of managing it and seeing what happened out of that. Um, they then referred me on to a neurosurgeon which I'm meeting with tomorrow. So what I thought I would do today would be just to put my story on record, on tape, and just document what happens from here because I've literally no idea what they will tell me tomorrow when I turn up and where we'll go from there. So I thought if I start something now and tell my story, then we can just see what happens. So today's Friday the 28th of Feb, the last day of summer in 2014. Um, I spoke yesterday a little bit about the nervous weight that I had ahead of today's appointment with the neurosurgeon regarding the, the possible um, glioma tumour in my brain. So I went along this morning um, with family into the appointment and essentially got told what I was expecting, that there was a low-grade tumour found in my brain. 
and as a result of that, uh, they're looking at the moment at next steps to take to, to fix it. So essentially what they're looking at doing is referring me on to a neurologist, which hopefully I'm seeing early next week, um, followed by an active MRI, which they need to do to determine what side of the brain my language is on, because essentially it can be on either side of the temporal lobes, depending on whether you're a left or right-handed um, favored person, and where the tumor is located is right near that section if the language is on that side of the brain. So they can't quite go as aggressive towards that surgery um, if they need to uh, be careful of where the language is located within my brain. So that's all to come next week, and they're looking ahead to scheduling a, um, a brain surgery for the following week. So we're just driving through Geelong um, on our way to Ocean Grove to have a bit of a surf. It's um, Sunday the 2nd of March, 2014. It's, been, it's good just to spend a Sunday not having to worry about work, not have to worry about anything else, and just kind of clear the head, which is what surfing is really you know, great for. So it's, um, yeah, really looking forward to, to spending the day out there. So today's the 6th of March, 2014, just heading into St. Vincent's Hospital to undergo a functional MRI, which is where they test um, the brain for what side of the brain's active when you're p performing particular functions. So essentially, they need to know where, um, where my language is based inside my head so they know how aggressive they can be in surgery. Um, and this is, this is done by doing uh, a series of photos whilst undertaking these activities to see where oxygen flows in the brain and where, where the brain um, designates um, activities and, and, and decides where, where things need to go. So um, we're just heading in there at the moment. Following that, I've got an EEG, which is like an uh, electronic um, brainwave kind of test where it just tests what your brain activity is like so they can see if there's any distortion and stuff in that. So. Obviously, uh, a little bit going on today. Saw the neurologist yesterday and she kind of talked us through a few different things about what's happening when and what to expect post-surgery and stuff like that. But a lot of that's still a little bit up in the air. So, um, yeah, just pushing through and, and we'll see what happens today. But it'll be an interesting test and hopefully we can get some, um, some real answers about what, you know, what the prognosis is like and stuff following it. Okay, well, today is... Uh, Friday the 7th of March 2014, um, I just thought I'd jump on uh, the webcam, just have a bit of a chat about what's been happening at the moment. Um, yesterday I had my functional MRI done on my brain just to see what side of my brain or my language um, and that kind of stuff was designated to. Um, I also had an EEG after that to monitor the brain waves in my head. So. Um, hopefully at the moment um, the neurosurgeon is looking over those results and he'll be able to let me know soon what the go is about surgery and when all that kind of stuff's likely to, to occur. Uh, what I did want to talk about though a little bit is just how important it is to have supportive friends and family around you because um, while you know hopefully everything will be fine and I can just get the surgery done, come out the other side and just get straight back into life, you know, pick it up where I left off, I think it's um, what's really kind of driven home lately has just been the fact that you know everyone's there to support you and you realize that um, you do really have a really good close-knit group of friends and family around you when you need them so um, especially for me I feel you know that I'm really lucky and fortunate to have have such good people around me to be able to um, to support me when I need when I need it it's, it's so important to have that mindset going in the right direction because it just is all about the trajectory on the other side and you know like your body is amazingly resilient and and can heal and things like that and do miraculous things so I kind of feel like if I'm in the best frame of mind as well as in you know 
reasonable physical shape as well, then that's probably the best way to approach it because I should hopefully then just be able to smash it and just get straight back where I left off. So that's that's pretty much where I'm at at the moment. Um, hoping to find out. I was hoping to find out today when the when the surgery was and things like that. But um, I guess that plan of attack won't be decided yet until early next week now, um, which is you know it is what it is. I just have to sit here and just you know enjoy life and stuff like that. Saturday the 15th of March 2014. Um, on Wednesday last week, I still hadn't heard anything about when my operation was going to be. Um, so I called the neurosurgeon's office uh, just to try and ascertain whether it, you know, it would be last week when they kind of initially thought that it might be. Um, and then I got a call back later that afternoon saying that an appointment had been made for me for Thursday. So... I went in there and had a chat to the neurosurgeon and he mentioned that my surgery had been booked for the following Monday, which is this Monday, the 17th of March. So I've just been sort of processing what's happening as far as the operation itself goes. Uh, obviously, they'll be shaving the side of my head just all the way through here and there'll be a, a huge uh, incision that'll, that'll kind of snake its way down my face like that. So. Um, just getting my head around exactly what's going to happen there. Obviously, it doesn't look uh, too pretty, and I'm sure it's going to be reasonably painful as well. I, everything was going as per normal. I saw the surgeons, they put the, um, the dots on my head um, and I needed to get an MRI done that basically does a, um, like a 3D geographical mapping of my brain so that when they're in the surgery they've got reference points and they know where exactly the tumour is so they, can, they know where, where to approach it from. So that was all normal. Had that done in the morning and then uh, went down for surgery. Um, at about half past three and started kind of going through the process and um, was in with the anaesthetist and, and went through everything. Um, they put a drip in my, my arm. They did also um, put some local anaesthetic in to try and put a, a cannula drip in this arm and, and couldn't find an artery very well because of the previous heart surgeries I'd had. And so they also then tried it in this arm and I've actually got already got a bit of bruising here um, and it's still quite numb and quite sore where they've gone in to try and find another artery in this one but this is the same case where they can't actually find an artery so they were hoping to go back in um, whilst I was under anaesthetic and, um, and get it knocked off from there. However, when I was in there, um, Paul Smith, the surgeon, loaded up the images onto a, on the DVD in, in the operating theatre and everything was ready to go and then he came in and said that the surgery had to be cancelled um, because the images that they had weren't conclusive enough for him to use during the operation because the MRI wasn't done in the, the full um, correct way that it was meant to be done today. So what they had to do was err on the side of caution and, um, and get an MRI done tonight and then to, um, to go back in tomorrow morning which is uh, Tuesday morning at around 10 o'clock and go again. I've got two of these nice looking um, accessories, but under here is a, is a drip in this arm in here, wrist in, in here, um, which you can kind of see through here. Got a bit of blood around it. And then in this one in here, which was put in yesterday, which has essentially got um, another tube in it which goes into my arm um, there so it's not it kind of hurts a little bit as it, as it digs back into your skin and into your body but at least when that's on it kind of keeps everything nice and tidy and locked away so and also out of sight you know and it kind of helps me sleep a little bit better so with a little bit more um, assistance through sleeping tablets and stuff like that I feel like I hopefully should be able to sleep okay tonight and then at least tomorrow, I think I'm second cab off the rank, so um, get down there at 9.30, knock me out, um, get all the cannulas in and all that kind of stuff and then and then um, go under the knife and uh, yeah, and get, and get everything back on track.
kind of easy sometimes. This is day one post up. Just uh, I'll have to get my first MRI after the operation. You can see, make sure that they got the best you get. So, I've got the worst headache of all time, but uh, just uh, it's about 9.30 in the morning, just getting it done. Had a little bit of a bite to eat earlier on. Didn't eat too much though, and just uh, got a bit of oxygen happening and a bit of a bit of an IV going on. But uh, looking forward to getting this done and hopefully getting on the men soon. How long is this MRI going to take? This one, we're only doing one, two, three, four, five sequences. Mm -hmm. The last two after the ejection take about ten minutes, five minutes each. So they're the longest ones. They're the ones that are the most sensitive to movement. Uh, can I get a bit of Because I can't keep that tube but I'm going to end up, might just a tiny bit of blood that might come up. Thank you, Lou. Maybe I'm hoping. It was so hard. You keep beautifully still. I know, it's the droning. And it's just having your head smashed in there. Yeah. And the top of the cage was like pressing on. Oh, was it? Here a little bit too, and I was like. Hi, it's Louise Newman, IJ, but walk is finished. I was just wondering if you could see the border. Thank you. Just got back from the MRI and um, I had to lay flat on my back for the first time since surgery. So all the blood was rushing to my head. I was so squashed in the little head holder thing with the cage over my head. It was killing and they couldn't put an earplug in this ear because of all the padding, all I could hear was just banging in my ear and I was squashed in and blood was rushing to my head for half an hour. I just had the most worst headache, it just keeps pumping and pulsating and it's so sore around here where the cut is, it's just killing me and I feel sick. They gave me some painkillers and they gave me some stuff through the drip to stop me getting sick. So hopefully that helps. Oh, I push too hard with your arms just because it increases your pressure in the brain. Mm -hmm. So it's just gently bring your arms up to about. So I was. Not too low. It's not too bad though. Yeah. That's fine. Yep. Let's just let it fine. And Yeah, I wonder how long I've got to get connected to this. It won't be long, I can imagine. Because mm. I've been having a fair bit of fluid, like trying to get my fluid intake up as well. Have you? Moment, so. Oh, good. Yeah, hopefully I can take that off soon. Yeah. Because I want to keep walking. Oh, exactly. Well, by all means, if you want to go for a walk, this needs to just be plugged in. Yeah. Let's get on the nurses to yeah. unplug it, or else they can sometimes even unattach them. Yeah, cool. As well. Sweet. Like if you want to go downstairs or anything like that. Yeah. So, yeah, as long as you do little bits at a time, don't push yeah. it too much. St Vincent's Private Hospital on Friday the 21st of March 2014. Getting better every day. I feel as though day one was really tough. Yesterday the turban came off and I started feeling a little bit better. 
just with this patch on my head, but still with a throbbing headache and today the headache's been managed a little better with more painkillers and some steroids and some anti-seizure medication and that kind of stuff. So um, other than the pain and just trying to kind of zonk myself out of it, I'm feeling okay. The news is basically that the confirmation was put through that I did have a grade two glioma tumor, which means that they could essentially cut it out and remove it and they don't need to worry immediately about um, radiation therapy or chemotherapy. That it's just going to be a matter of testing and waiting and rescanning and just kind of seeing what happens and just watching it over time now. But um, the hope is that I can just kind of get back to normal life at the moment. I feel um, really pleased that now this is over, I can get my life back on track and that I can't wait to start the next chapter of my life. And I think what this is doing now is giving me time to think and time to really hone in and give me the, um, the opportunity to be able to get some perspective on what's important in my life and what I want to do work-wise and career-wise and, and life-wise and what's important to me and what's not. I'm hoping to be discharged on Sunday, this Sunday which is in about two days away. So that's the plan at this stage. Um, they seem to think that Sunday's a good day to be discharged because it's a little quieter on the roads and I can kind of get home and get settled back into my familiar surroundings without it being really, really busy. Um, so I'm hoping to, yeah, to get the tick off and to get all my drugs and just to head home because I'm not too sure what other recovery can take place at this hospital following this. It's just really great to have some friends and family always around me and just being surrounded by people that love me and that who I love as well um, to help me through these difficult times because without, you know, without the support of all these people, I'd just be a sick kid lying in a hospital bed um, with a brain tumour that's just been cut out of my head. So at least at the moment it's a distraction and it does make me tired, but it can kind of help me just focus on getting better to enjoy the things that I like doing with my loved ones rather than just lying in the bed wallowing in self-pity so I don't want anyone to feel sorry for me and I don't want to feel sorry for myself and I think that's really important to uh, to be able to avoid. Today's Saturday the 22nd of March 2014 um, day five I think it is since the surgery on my brain uh, I'm just going to go for a bit of a walk around the ward now just to kind of get the blood flowing and help with my recovery. So the more I can walk, the better I feel. And um, so that's the mission now to get back up on my feet and uh, to keep pushing through because I can't wait now to, to start to get my life back to normal. Today is Sunday the 23rd of March, 2014. And the day that I came home from St. Vincent's Private after having my brain tumor removed on Tuesday. I'm feeling um, good about being home, feeling really positive about everything. Just in a lot of pain, um, as far as the trip home was concerned, it was quite a tough transition. Um, it was really tough to get in the car and I found that all overwhelming, getting driven home and stuff. Even though it's only a 10 minute drive, it was really, really taxing. So really tired, um, and obviously bandaged up quite a lot through the top here so a little bit disappointing as far as that goes a bit of a setback there but hopefully now I'm home I can start to settle in and really just do my recovery now well, when they took the bandages off to reveal the staples I had a bit of oozing in my wound a bit of blood that was running down my face um, just in a little section that just didn't quite heal properly I was having a few little issues healing so the, the surgeon, um, Paul Smith, needed to put some more gauze on and put an extra bandage back on it. Just put a bit more pressure and keep it bandaged until he takes the, um, takes the staples out of my head. The neurosurgeon said that there'd be some, some tough times ahead. He said that depression is quite common, feeling down in the dumps and things like that. When there's a lot going on inside your mind and in your head, that you've not only got to play mind games, but you've actually got to get your head in the right space to be able to do what you need to do. So there will be some really tough times and I can feel the agitation and a little bit of anger and stuff like that 
just simmering beneath the surface at the moment. And that is going to be tough to really manage. And I'm, you know, and I know that it's going to come. I know that the times are going to come where I'm really going to be tested. My patience is going to be tested, and I'm really just going to have to try and not let everything just get overwhelming. I know the hard yards are going to come in the next couple of weeks. Are probably going to be the toughest weeks when I'm really starting to try and get all my functions back to semi-normal normality. Um, but I'm confident that I have the mind space and the mindset and the support to be able to push through and become better. So I'm just so wrapped that I'm home now and that I can start to like rebuild my life from here because essentially now is day one of the rest of my life now. You know, like you scratch what happened in the past, you take it all on board and you learn from every experience that you undertake. But you use things like this as a real opportunity to improve and to change your tact and to do something different. You only get one crack at life. So when things like this come along, maybe it's meant for a reason. It's meant to tell me something. I'm meant to be, you know, pursuing something different. I'm meant to be changing my ethos on life. And it's, you know, really important that I put the right steps forward now and really try and take a stranglehold on my life and what I want to do with it. Where they had to operate to remove the brain tumour uh, was in a part of the brain that can affect um, short-term memory, can affect personality, and it can affect a lot of spatial kind of recognition and those kinds of things. So one of the things was obviously learning music and stuff and the ability to be able to play music again after, um, after having surgery. Like, you never know what's going to happen and whether I'm going to be able to just jump back on and be able to play or whether I've lost some of those skills as part of taking part of brain away, you know, that that interrupts that area. So I thought I'd jump on and and just have a bit of a play around and just see if I've still kind of got my um, got my skills, which hopefully I do. So I thought I'd just jump on and just put a few notes together, basically. <laughs> Today's Thursday, the 27th of March, 2014, which is um, eight days after having my brain surgery to remove the tumour. Um, what I'm doing now is heading in the car down to Oakley to a bike shop to look at purchasing a bike, a road bike that I can then um, put up on a trainer inside my house, in my apartment, 
and then start getting back on the bike over the next six weeks to roll the legs over and try and improve on my fitness before then taking it out on the road. So, because I can't really go to the gym or do any real exercise for the next couple of months, I thought at least this is a way that I can at least start passively exercising and, you know, just getting a bit of air in my lungs and hopefully trying to help expedite the recovery a little bit. Um, so, yeah, heading down there today to hopefully get sorted out and hopefully the guys down there can look after me. Today's Tuesday, the 1st of April, 2014. Um, I've spoken a lot about wanting to get um, myself some new fitness goals uh, post-surgery to try and recover and, uh, and get back to my, my best. And um, that involved getting a road bike, um, which I mentioned the other day too, going down to Oakley to look at buying a bike at iBikes Australia. And the guys down there, um, Fortunately, sorted me out with a, with a road bike, a great bike that I could put on a trainer and um, work out in my lounge room. So today's the first time that um, I've had it at home and I've managed just to uh, put a bit of Lycra on and um, jump on the bike. Um, it's also about an hour after I had a neurosurgeon appointment with Dr. Paul Smith and he basically said that um, I was overdoing things a little bit, trying to go out for lunch with friends and trying to like get out and about a little bit and it was all becoming a bit overwhelming so I've got to take it easy so today's not really all about getting back in the training um, kind of thing, it's more about just getting on the bike and just like familiarising myself but not overdoing it so just thought I'd jump on just to give it a quick little spin um, and then hopefully like in the next few weeks or so I'll be able to do a little bit more work in the lounge room and, um, and hopefully uh, yeah, build up my fitness again. Thursday the 22nd of May 2014, nine weeks post-op. As you can see, the, the, the wound has healed pretty well. You can barely even notice it anymore. Um, still a little bit numb, but all kind of feeling a lot better now. And uh, today I had... Um, an MRI, basically the first major MRI since a one one day post operation. So in my hot little hands down here, I have uh, the results of um, of today's MRI, and I'm seeing my neurosurgeon on Tuesday next week to run through the results. So it's a little bit of a nervous waiting game now, just to hope that everything comes off okay and that everything's fine. Um, I did have a bit of a think over the last couple of weeks, whilst I started recovering doing a little bit of cycling and doing those kinds of things about maybe setting a new fitness goal and how I could contribute to society. So what I did find was the New York Marathon uh, later this year, which is on the 2nd of November, um, they offer spots for runners to run for charities. And there is a charity in the USA called Be Cured, which, uh, which raises money and awareness for brain cancer research. So I think that'd be a fantastic uh, thing for me to do. And it's something that means I could, you know, really contribute and give back after uh, all that I've been through and perhaps help people that are, that are following kind of similar paths to mine. So I contacted them and they actually responded and said they'd love to have me join the team. So I could be off to New York to run the marathon. Today's Wednesday, the 28th of May, 2014. Yesterday I had my neurosurgeon appointment uh, following up from the first MRI post-op I had last week as my uh, my 10-week follow-up and when I spoke to the neurosurgeon yesterday he said that uh, there was still some residual tumor in the brain um, in the temporal lobe where they cut out the large chunk of tumor he said that uh, they couldn't remove all of it because it was it was really close to the brain stem and uh, and to an upper part of the brain that was was too critical to, to go too aggressive with. So there still is a small amount of tumor in there. And I did know going into the surgery that he might not be able to get all of the cells, but I really wasn't expecting to hear the news that there was residual tumor because um, we then had a long discussion about it and. And I asked questions like, um, will the tumor end up growing back or will it change or upgrade to a higher grade um, from my current grade two tumor status? And essentially the answers, I, I, I really just didn't know uh, how to take. Um, the answers in short were that there was all likelihood that 
the tumour will grow again um, and that it eventually also will upgrade and change to a higher grade of um, glioma which is obviously quite distressing because once it upgrades to a high grade tumour which is essentially grade 3 onwards um, the prognosis and the outlook changes significantly too so um, the other thing he did say was that he didn't know how long it would be before things started growing again or changing but he essentially said that it was almost inevitable that it will down the track so um, his advice following that was just to keep living my life as normal as possible um, and get my life back on track and, and, and do those kinds of things and try just to, you know, put it to the back of my mind and not really think about because positive outlooks really do um, change your, your, your recovery.